I'm Manfred Kohl. I come from Nova Scotia, Canada, and I represent an organization called Overseas Council International, an organization that for the last 40 years is helping theological schools all over the world, including the school here in Johannesburg, South Africa, called SATS. I'm very excited to be here and to share with you. Just two days ago, I was asked to speak at a graduation. It was a great event. I was so moved to see how many hundreds of students got a degree. And quite many got a master degree and even a doctor degree. I was very impressed for people who got a PhD for their studies for years. And so I was asked to speak. And I shared with them something that I would like to share with you. Oh, by the way, I'm originally from Germany, so I speak a little bit with a heavy accent. So you have to listen very carefully, but I'm sure you get it. There was a seminary, probably the best seminary ever, called the Seminary of Jesus. We read in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, that Jesus got a group of students together, 12 students. He selected them for a three-year program. They were full-time with him. They did not go to a classroom and they did not speak in front of a camera. They just walked along and, and, and learned from each other and listened to the master, to the rabbi, asking him questions, sitting down and discussing some of the topics. Well, I took some time to find out what did Jesus teach his 12 full-time students and sometimes 70 part-time students and whenever he gave an important speech a couple thousand people came to listen to him. He was a good teacher. He was the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I, I was analyzing in the four Gospels what did Jesus teach. And I looked at all the topics and the most important topic that Jesus taught was the topic of prayer. The students ask him, teacher, master, rabbi, please teach us how to pray. We want to know how to, how to communicate with God, how, how to, to talk to you. And Jesus took the time to teach them how to pray. You know, in all the seminary I have visited, so many Bible schools, I have had a chance to, to speak and to look at their curriculum. Very, very few have a required subject on prayer. We need a course on prayer. We need time to learn how to pray. Not just to make a list of all the items we want to ask God to, to, to to help and to, to, to bless and to protect and to, to save. Prayer is also a conversation where after we have spoken, we listen. And we have some beautiful examples in the Bible of some prayers where people were listening to God. We have to learn how to listen. And if you have a chance, go through the Old Testament and the New Testament and look at all the prayers, beautiful prayers. Prayers from the top of the mountain, like Moses. Prayers inside a fish, Jonah. Prayer, David, who was running away from his own son, put, trying to, to hide in, his, in caves, how he prayed. And, how they are recorded, beautiful prayers. Prayers of Paul, prayers of Jesus, prayers of John. Take time to read the prayers, meditate on them, and be quiet so that God can speak to you. Secondly, Jesus taught his 12 students how to be a servant. 
So often we want to be number one. We always want to, to lead other people. We want to be the, the top man. Jesus taught his students, you have to learn to be a servant, to help other people, to put other people ahead of you. Oh, that's so difficult. We have to learn that. And the Master is willing to teach us. And if you ask him, please give me the opportunity to, to serve other people, he will show you hundreds of opportunities. The Holy Spirit will open your, your mind and you will see so many opportunities how you can serve other people. Be a servant. And the church, our church today, our seminary today, our Bible schools today, should be places where people learn how to serve. Number three, our Lord Jesus taught his students how to, how to share, how to give away God's blessing. You know, we receive so much. We receive hundreds and thousands of blessings. Count them one by one. And you see what God is doing in your life but share them with other people. If you share God's blessing, your eyes were opened and you will see the greatness of God. You will see the power of Jesus Christ. If you begin to take the blessing and share it with other people, it will be the most exciting time in your life. Don't hang on. Don't say that is mine. Nothing is ours. All that we have, and all that we are belongs to God, not to us. It's only given to us for a short time of good management, to multiply it and to praise the Lord. My friend, we have to learn to give and to share. The Lord taught his students how to worship. Oh, that's a big topic and has so, split so many churches. Worship. Sometimes I'm invited to preach in a church and they have an early service. They say, well, that is a modern service. And then the second service is more the traditional service. It's amazing how we divide, how we worship God. Worship is not the 10 minutes or 15 minutes before the sermon. Worship is not just to sing and to, to, to pray. Jesus taught us that worship is a lifestyle. That a whole day, 24 hours, is worship. We should worship God, and he is the best example. We should not just spend a few minutes to worship. Worship begins in the morning when you wake up. And every moment should be an act of worship even in the time of great difficulties, even if you have to face some, some tough situations, you have to learn to worship. Jesus taught his students how to worship. Then Jesus taught his, his students how to be peacemakers. In one of his big speeches, we call it the Sermon on the Mount, fantastic sermon. And next time your pastor is sick or your pastor is not available, you just get up and just read the Sermon on the Mount. It's the best sermon you ever can preach. Beautiful. And in that Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, be peacemakers. Not fighting with each other, not dividing everything. Have more focus on reconciliation and making peace. On, on, on giving in, not fighting for your rights. It doesn't matter how much you get, how much you have. Take the step to have peace, reconciliation. Jesus taught his students to do so. And it is amazing how in the writings of Peter and John later on, how often they talked about peacemaking, making peace, being kind, looking for the advantage of the other people. 
See the other sister or brother more important than yourself. Jesus taught his students how to be peacemakers. And then Jesus did something that is very, very important. Jesus emphasized the uniqueness of children. He put children into the middle and said, all you students, if you don't become like a little child, forget all your theology, forget all the learning, you must have the attitude of a little child. Or if you only would learn from the children. Maybe you have children. Take them more serious. Their questions, their inquiries. Oh, that's so important that we take them serious. I wish in our churches we would have more children involved in the worship service. They can give a simple prayer or testimony. They can read the scripture even if they don't know how to pronounce some of the terms. It doesn't really matter. I just attended a service where a young boy, probably 11 years old, was asked to, to say the prayer. And he began, he took the microphone and he did quite well. But then he got stuck. He did not know how to finish the prayer. And I could see the whole congregation, they, they, they opened their eyes a little bit and what, what, what will happen now? And the boy, he got frustrated, but then he finally said, Oh God, you know everything. Just do your job. Amen. I believe that every person in the church remember that prayer ten times longer than the prayer the pastor offered on a Sunday after the sermon. There's so many lessons that Jesus taught. They're all together 15. I'm not able to give you all 15. But if you focus on the ones I just mentioned, you will see that the teaching of Jesus had some real impact. Today we have to learn to be more open to the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not so much theology, but practical implication based on the teaching of Jesus. Oh, I like to see in our training institutions, whatever level it is, that we focus more on the teaching of our, our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, God bless you and thank you. Amen.